Hi, this is Marie, World Peace Knits, episode 49. Today I have uh, lots of projects for you. I have uh, crochet, lots of crochet. I have uh, knitting, sewing, I have a garden update, I have coffee and tea corner, and then I have the Denver Cruise Project. So stick around, let's get started. So the very first thing that I was working on was this Astri blanket by Arnie and Carlos. So um, you just make all of these little flowers and I used scraps to make them and then you join them together. I used all kinds of ice yarns. I used a size F crochet hook um, which is a 3.75 millimeter hook and um, I attached them all together with Softly Baby in cream colorway and then um, I used wool melange in different colors, Softly Baby in like the light turquoise and the pink. There's the pink again. I used um, Classic Erin in lilac and there's a purple one too. Classic Erin was in indigo blue and lilac. And then I used a light green let me see if I can find, there's the green in the classic Erin. I also used uh, Favorite in gray, which I thought it, oh, this, yep. And then I used um, Harmony in two different colorways. So Harmony is, let me see if I can find some. I'll stand up and show it to you in a second. But Harmony is like a mixture of pastels and I have two different color, colorways of Harmony. I have 6113 and 6114. And so one of them is like a little bit brighter than the other one. So, oh, this is the brighter one. So, and then there's like a lighter one. It's like up in here. So I'm gonna stand up and show it to you. So I just decided to make it in the size of like a lap blanket. I don't even know if I can show you the whole thing. And I didn't put a border around it because I decided if like I got a hole in it or maybe one of the flowers came apart, I'd like to be able to just put it back together quickly. And I thought if I had a border on it, it might not get put back together quickly. <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's a little easier to take it apart. I know it would look prettier with a border, but I guess I can always put a border on it. I'm just contemplating. I was just thinking it would be so much easier. But I love it. It's super cute. And I definitely would make another one. While I was um, in the middle of making it, some of these... One of my friends, this lady that lives across the street from me, her name's Sue, she gave me some little scraps that are like sparkly. So like that green one, this red one, and she makes some sort of a doll, I think. And the skirts have the sparkly. And this silver one, I don't know if you can see the sparkle, but it has like a little bit of sparkle, like Stellina in the yarn. All right. And you could totally use whatever scraps you have. That's why I liked it. Okay, so the next thing that I uh, was working on, that I finished, is I'm gonna, going to show you two uh, pairs of socks that I knit. So the first one is this, uh, these green blue socks. And these are just a standard vanilla sock. And I used, this is called Trekking XXL, and I had this much left over. So I have totally enough for maybe another pair of like shorty socks. And these have been on the needles forever, and I just thought I would grab them and finish them so I could get some of my whips, uh, works in progress, finished up. So I got this pair of socks done. I used, uh, this is color 618, uh, trekking. And I used um, a 2.75 needle, 64 stitches around vanilla sock pattern. So I knit the whole sock in like a tube and then I uh, put the heel in afterwards. So the next thing that I have are another pair of socks that are finished. And this, this pair is opal 
Sweet and Spicy 3. And so this line of um, sock yarn is in um, like drinks, like summer drink um, colors. And this is what they turned out like. And I love them. They're super cute. This is just another uh, vanilla sock that I made with an afterthought heel. So I knit the tube and then I go back in and put the heel in. It's like super easy. All right, so those are my knitting for socks. Let's see, and then I had a pair of fingerless mitts that I was working on last time that I finished that I didn't put on the little um, patches yet. And then you guys said below like what patch I should use, and I used this one. Oh, can you see it even? The milk and donut. <laughs> So everyone was like, use the milk and donut. So I totally put those on. I just thought I would show them to you so you could see them. So they're super cute. I love them. And I'll bring them back out in winter time. All right. So the next thing that I have is another blanket that I've been working on. So in this book, Crochet Yourself Calm. On this page, oops, this is the pattern I'm using, and it's just like a, um, oops, it's called a V-stitch stripe, and basically you just make V-stitches, and if you change the colors of the yarn on each row, then it turns out looking like, like, um, like this zigzag, which is really cool. So this is still being worked on currently. I did quite a bit of work on it, but I didn't get it finished. I'll stand up and show it to you. But this is what it looks like when you change colors on each row. So I love it. It's super cute. And it's so soft. So it is, quite a bit of it is done. And I love it. So I used two different kinds of yarn for this. This one is so soft. It kind of reminds me of like a blanket I had when I was a child that I loved to snuggle with because it's so soft. And so I just thought I would show you the yarns that I used for this. I used this yarn right here. It's called, from Ice, it's called Picasso. And it's like a rainbow. I just love it. And it's so soft. It's a little tiny bit fuzzy. You can see like a little tiny bit of a halo on it. But it's so soft. And then I used Softly Baby along with it. Which is one of my favorite ice yarns for blankets. Because it makes such a soft uh, blanket. So there's the number on the bag in case you're looking for it. This one is just a white, uh, softly baby white, yeah. And this one, in case you're looking for it, it is Picasso green, purple, yellow, and pink. And I'll go ahead and link those down below also in case you're looking for them. But don't you just love the pattern when you switch colors on each row? It is just so cute. It just looks like rickrack to me. And I used, um, I was going to say, I used a size K hook for this one. That's what I'm using. So hopefully I'll work on this one, try to get it completed soon so I can use it. All right, put that away. Okay, so the next thing that I've been working on is Oh yes, okay, so I worked on this bunting. So I saw this pattern and it, it was for free um, and I believe she's going to start charging for the pattern but you can uh, check it out and see if it's still free. It was free yesterday so I didn't go on the pattern today uh, to check and see if it's still free on Ravelry but it is um, the Solstice Bunting by Emma Scott and then I also used another kind of bunting, which a bunting is like a kind of like a string with like little flags or something on it. 
And then um, Tiny Flag Bunting by Knit Crochet Love was the other bunting that I used, the bunting pattern. So what I did was I, I did one of the solstice and then I did one of the tiny flag. <laughs> so I just thought it was so cute. I thought I wanted to do something for like the garden area to put it up. And then I crocheted like a loop. I just did a chain. So I like chained like 50. And then I put the first uh, winter solstice. And then I chained like 15 more. And then I did the little, um, what was it called again? The tiny flag bunting. And then I put on the bottom of the tiny flag bunting, I put these little tassels. And this I just um, kind of put the yarn over that hole and then tied a little piece of string around it and let the string dangle so that it looks like a little tassel. I just thought they were so cute for like the summertime. I kind of envisioned them like on the porch or just in the garden. Or you could put them indoors, I suppose. But and you can do them in all colors. It just looks kind of festive and cheery kind of for this time. You know, I just thought I would, I wanted something to cheer me up a little, so. All right, so this, um, I crocheted this with uh, Lorena Worsted. So this one is uh, something I just had in my stash. And this one is, I believe, 50%, no, 55% cotton, 45 acrylic. And then uh, the blue I used was I Love This Cotton. So basically, you could use any cotton. I think you could probably use acrylic also, but I think the cotton um, keeps its shape a little bit better. So, and then, you know, I, you could use whatever you'd like. But these are the two that I used. I also used a size G hook and yeah, that's it. So this is, I love this cotton turquoise. I don't know if I mentioned that. So, all right. So the next thing, I'm just checking on my notes. The next thing, okay. So I've been wanting to sew this pattern and it's called the um, Modern Japanese Rice Pouch. I'll just put that down below. And it's by KZ Stevens on Insta. So I saw a bunch of people making these um, rice pouches. It's like a little bag for, you know, you could use it for crochet, for your projects. And I've always wanted to make one. And they have these little like tabs on them. I just thought they were super cool. And I made mine really scrappy. So I worked on this yesterday and I also like I put my little tag on it. I did a little bit of embroidery. This is with the machine, but then I did another like machine embroidery on the side. And then I just did, I don't know if you can see that, but I did an M right here. And so, and then this was just some, it recommended that you just do some like stitching right there by hand. So it kind of goes through some of the options that you have and then you just tighten it with the two straps. So I love it. I've always wanted to make one. I just didn't want to sit down and figure out, you know, how to do a new pattern. Sometimes it's a little intimidating, but this was like super easy. And really you could spend a lot of time um, decorating it with more embroidery and um, or you could just do it plain. The, um, the one thing I will say about this pattern is it's normally eight inches high and I made mine 10 inches high so I could, you know, fill it more full with uh, yarn and a project, like a larger project. But I think the next one I make will be like the eight inches high like she recommends in the pattern because it would just, they're just so cute and small. So, okay, so. The, um, the next thing that I have is coffee and tea corner and the coffees that I've been drinking this week uh, or this uh, month, uh, carrot cake from Bones Coffee. I got a, a large bag of this. I had a sample one I think I showed you before, but I had a large bag of it because it was so delicious. And I just opened this one from World Market 
they deliver, you know, so you can order online. Caramel Macchiato from World Market, and this one is really good. And then I have a couple of teas that I've been drinking. Um, I've shown these before, but I just love them, so I thought I would show them again. Miss Patmore's uh, Blueberry Scone. This is one of my favorites. And it's like a Downton Abbey tea from the Republic of Tea. And then Miss Padmore's Pudding Tea. Now this is my super, one of my all-time favorites. So I've been having both of these when it's chilly. Sometimes it's kind of going back and forth between chilly and then warm here. And then um, I just got this in the mail from Christine. She mailed me this. Uh, Raspberry Mojito by Harney and Sons and I made a big uh, iced tea um, yesterday and drank it. It was so delicious and it's an herbal tea. It comes loose and so you have to use like a steeper or something but it's really good and it's raspberry flavored like it says so delish. All right I'm going to go ahead and put the um, Denver Cruise Projects uh, next and then uh, the garden update. So I'll see you next time. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.